Hello everybody, Chris Wilcox, Chairman of the Market Intelligence Committee. It's a great pleasure to again be presenting at the IWTO Congress, although a very different experience for us all, being a digital Congress rather than face-to-face. -face. We're all no doubt feeling very battered and dazed about what's happened in the last three months around the world and the speed that has happened with COVID-19 and the lockdowns. That's exactly the way I see that the wool industry is feeling. And so I'll talk to you now about what I see is about the current situation and the short term outlook for the global industry. Well, the industry in the 12 months since we last met last April in Venice has had a double hit, a double whammy. At first, the US-China trade war. We already knew about the tensions that were rising in April of last year when we last met, but that really gathered pace and came to a head in September with punitive import duties imposed by the US on imports from China of many products, including wool clothing. But then that was nothing compared to the outbreak of the coronavirus and the COVID-19 and the lockdown around the world and the subsequent economic damage that we've seen and still seeing. We've seen huge rise in unemployment, consumer confidence is plummeting, retail sales are falling, governments responding with massive economic stimulus packages. We're seeing supply chains being disrupted and closed. And we're also seeing for the wool industry cessation of wool auctions in some countries, although in Australia they continue, although with appropriate social distancing and personal hygiene activities. But first of all, let's turn to the US-China trade war and the impact of those punitive tariffs that were imposed by the US on China's imports of wool clothing last September. These charts show that impact in terms of imports of wool clothing by the US in total and from China. And you can see on that first chart here, the huge drop in imports of wool clothing from China by the US. At the same time, we've seen an increase in imports of wool clothing by the US from other countries such as Italy and Vietnam, although that hasn't been enough to offset the decline in China, the largest supply to the US, and subsequently, the whole total imports by the US of wool clothing has fallen. But of course, as I said, that's small by comparison with the impact of COVID-19. And there's been a massive economic impact as seen in this chart. These, this shows economic growth weighted according to the major wool consuming regions, both with and without China, over the last 20 years. We have a forecast there from the International Monetary Fund, and you can see the V-shaped impact that the International Monetary Fund is expecting. A huge drop in 2020 before a rebound in 2021. And the impact, the total impact is greater than we saw in the, the impact of the global financial crisis. And we're seeing, we're seeing that in consumer confidence that has collapsed over the last two and three months, as shown by this chart. First of all, in the United States and the EU, but also in Japan and Korea. In China, we haven't seen as much of an impact in the official statistics on consumer confidence as you might have expected. And consumer confidence and the lockdown around the world has meant that retail sales have slumped. This shows the percentage change year on year in retail sales of both clothing 
and carpets in March, the one month of March. And you can see the massive drops up to 35% in some countries in the retail sales of clothing. Carpets have a similar impact, although maybe to a smaller extent, and then total retail sales have also fallen very sharply. This has affected everybody in the wool textile industry. And we can see that in a survey that we conduct of the IWTO member countries around the world. This year we had nine countries uh, supplying their survey responses and one company, Sudvula. And you'll be unsurprised to hear that they report that production activity levels have dropped sharply in all stages and in all sectors. And it's now trading at very at poor to very poor activity levels. And all, all reporting countries report the same negative impact. As well, we're seeing a significant rise in stocks across all sectors of the industry, which will cause an issue in terms of clearing those stocks in future. And these conditions are the worst since we began the survey 10 years ago. Let me show you some examples or some snapshots of those results. But let's look at the specific aggregated data. Now this is data weighted uh, across all those nine countries and one company. And it shows the production activity levels across the industry. Now, if you remember, this is a sentiment uh, survey rather than hard objective data, but it's about sentiment. And we ask the questions of, of whether production activity is everything from very poor to very good and ask the respondents to give a rating. And we cover all six sectors, early stage processing, spinning, weaving, knitting, garment making and interior textiles. And the data goes all the way back to 2009. And as you can see, there's been a massive drop in the sentiment about production activity. And respondents in aggregate say that the current activity levels are poor to very poor in all sectors. And you can see the massive drop in that rating since the end of 2019, here and here. You can see it's very poor in spinning and weaving. It's poor in early stage processing, garment making and knitting. Interior textiles is doing better, thanks mainly to increased production of blankets, particularly in China. Nevertheless, respondents can't see much improvement by the end of 2020. Say so that stocks have really built up significantly. And again, for those of you who have heard my presentations before, this is about sentiment about stocks. We ask about whether respondents feel that stocks are above normal, or, or below normal, or are normal. And you can see the sharp rise in stock levels, according to the respondents, particularly in weaving and in knitting. But every sector has seen a significant rise in stock levels, except for garment making. And maybe that provides a small glimmer of hope. You can see more details in the country summary reports, which are available from IWTO. So we have very poor consumer confidence. We have economic uh, growth, which is falling rapidly. We have retail sales, which are falling year on year. And we're seeing that being felt throughout the wool textile industry. We're also seeing raw wool demand falling 
even before the major impact of the COVID-19 epidemic. And this chart shows the uh, drop in raw wool demand by major processing countries around the world. In aggregate, raw wool demand from the five major exporting countries have been down by 10% for this season to February. Being, we've seen a drop in imports by China, by Italy, by Germany, by the Czech Republic, and by a range of other countries. We have seen some small increase in imports by India and also by other Europe, that's mainly due to an increased imports by Bulgaria. And this, remember, was to the season to February. It doesn't include what happened in Mar March and April, where we can expect to see the even bigger impact caused by COVID-19. By major exporting country, we've seen a big drop in, in exports from Australia, from Argentina, from Uruguay. We've seen a rebound in exports from South Africa. Keep in mind, this is up till February before the shutdown there in, in South Africa. But that rebound came about because uh, China last year had banned imports from South Africa due to an outbreak of foot and mouth disease. And then this year, those, uh, those um, restrictions have been lifted. We've also seen a modest improvement in exports from New Zealand up until February, but I'm sure that we will see that reversed in March and April. So rural demand is weak. What about prices? Well, we're seeing that prices have fallen very sharply across the board. This chart shows merino wool prices, 16 and a half micron, 18 micron, and 21 micron prices from South Africa. And we see the big drop in prices here. We saw the peak reached in uh, the second half of 2018 uh, in the super cycle. We knew that prices had come down by the time we met in Venice last year. But then they, they came down even more in the second half of 2019. They looked like they'd steadied, and now they've dropped sharply, in particular in US dollar terms, as you can see here. Broad wool prices have fallen again from already low levels, as you can see in these charts, and see the big drop in prices here and here even though prices have been low for two years, more than two years, in fact. When you look at medium wool prices between 24 and 31 microns, and you can see they're volatile, but we also see the, a sharp drop in prices, in particular in Australia, where we've had price reports over the last two months where we haven't had those for Uruguay. But nevertheless, we've seen those prices fall as well. The falling wool prices will help improve wool's price competitiveness against synthetics and cotton. In particular, this is true for merino wool represented here by 18 and 21 micron. As you know, merino will have been at very high levels relative to these other fibres over the last four years or so, which had caused some substitution in some products away from merino wool. The recent fall in the price ratio uh, will mean that there is some support in demand for, for merino wool. But even so, the price ratio sitting at about six to one now against both synthetics and cotton is still high relative to what we saw back in the 1990s when it was only three to one. For medium micron wool, we've seen a drop back in the price ratio as well against both synthetics and cotton. And this, this pullback will also help support demand for this medium micron wool. For broad wool, represented here by New Zealand broad wool prices, 
those price ratios had been low for quite a number of years and they, they've fallen again and hopefully this will see some improvement in demand in coming 12 months. So what's happened on the production side? Well, as you all know, we do a survey of wool producing countries from IWTO in the lead into the Congress. And this year's survey shows that wool production in 2020 will fall by 2%. And there'll be expected to be a further fall in 2021. In 2021, the level will be 1,078 million kilograms clean. This is the lowest in well over 70 years. The other feature is that we saw, we see that apparel wool and merino wool production will fall again, while wool that's typically used in interior textiles will be maintained. As this chart shows, the orange line is interior textiles wool, and you can see that at the current forecast, we'd expect to see little change in production of this wool. But production of apparel wool and merino wool is expected to fall again both in 2020 and in 2021. Looking at the individual countries, as this table shows, I won't go through it in detail, but as you can see, the big driver of the decline in 2020, the 2% decline, is a 7% fall in production in Australia caused by extensive drought throughout much of eastern Australia and uh, a long running drought which caused both lower wool cuts per sheep and also fewer sheep being shorn. Other countries have seen uh, small declines or in some cases increases such as Argentina. China has also seen a, a drop in production, although in contrast Mongolia is expected, expected to see a 4% rise in production this year. In 2021, even though the drought in Australia has broken, the Australian Wool Production Forecasting Committee expects to see another 2% drop in production because of fewer sheep being shorn. You can get more detail in the country summary reports, which will be available from IWTO. So let's look at prospects for 2020. Well, it's very tough in the current environment to really have a good feel for prospects. In fact, anybody who could tell you confidently that they know what will happen in 2020 doesn't know what they're talking about. I don't really know what will happen this year and into 2021. But let's have a look at a checklist as this table shows. Uh, as I've, I've showed this uh, last year at Venice, and the crosses are negative, the reds negative, the green is positive, the ticks are positive. And you can see that uh, on the production side, merino wool production is very constrained around the world and that will help support prices. The same is true to a lesser extent for medium wool, but for broad wool, strong wool, as I've said uh, in my previous slide, there's there's no change in production of that strong wool. It remains at fairly high levels, and that'll be a negative. But economic growth, wool textile industry conditions, and stocks in the industry are all negative across the board for all three categories of wool. Wool demand for merino wool is, is good in the active leisure wear market in particular. And so that's a tentative tick, if you like. But for medium and strong wool, at this stage, it's negative uh, in terms of wool demand. Uh, um, that may change by the end of the year, but at this stage, you'd have to say it's negative. The price ratio with other fibres, even though there's been improvement for merino and medium wool prices compared with synthetics and cotton, 
it still remains at fairly high levels and that will be discouraging. Strong wool on the other hand has been very price competitive for a number of years and provides would hopefully provide some support. What does that mean for prices? Well, I don't know. I really can't judge what will happen with prices for the remainder of 2020. I suspect they'll be volatile. I suspect there's some downside uh, for a period and will but by the end of 2020, we could see some improvement as things slowly come back to normal around the world. But I emphasise slowly come back to normal. But it's very, very hard. It's impossible to pick. I, I've never been in a situation where I cannot really have a good feel for where I see prices going. Well, it's a very difficult time we're all living through at the moment with social distancing and lack of social contact. Even though restrictions are being eased, it's hard to imagine going back to normal and what that normal will be. But as the old Persian saying goes, this too shall pass. We will go back to normal. We will resume our normal lives. Consumers will start going to buy things and they will be looking for comfort. They will be looking for naturalness. They'll be looking for value and wool provides exactly that. And I think we will see an improvement in conditions and in demand in the early part of 2021. It will, there'll be some tough times to come, but we will see an improvement. Thank you all for listening. Stay safe, stay healthy.